Okay, well, today on That's Classic, we have a great one. Um, this is uh, just one of those fun ones that, you know, it just takes me back right away. Uh, we have none other than uh, the woman that played Heather Owens on Mr. Belvedere. We have Tracy Wells, or she also goes by Tracy Tuft. Um, Tufty. 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 There yes. you go. There you go. Um, so welcome, Tracy. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh, definitely. No, I'm 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 just thrilled to have you on the show. So um anyway, right out of the gates, uh what can you tell me? I mean, I've I, you know, I did a lot of research and looked to, into a lot of things, but I never really got a sense of your first audition for Mr. Belvedere. What what do you remember of that and then the process, obviously, to the point where they were like, you're it. Well, how that came about was I got a call from my agent at the time was Iris Burton, who mm -hmm. was a great agent back in the day. She represented like Kirk Cameron, River Phoenix, I mean, oh. just Henry Thomas from E.T., oh, all wow. these great actors. And she is like a she is a podcast interview in and of itself. She was a character. But I got the call, my mom got the call, and it was to interview for Belvedere. And we went to 20th Century Fox, and the casting director at the time was Cody Ewell. And I went in, and I read my sides and auditioned. And, you know, when you're a kid, you're not really clear on picking up the vibes, you know? You don't really, you're not really looking out for that stuff as you are as a young adult. You know, I was just, I was 11 when I auditioned for the show. And when we filmed the pilot, I turned 12 years old. So I was really young. Yeah, and definitely. I, I thought the interview went well. I mean, I didn't know. I was just a kid. And then we got the call that I got a callback, but the callback was going straight to network. Usually mm -hmm. you go on an audition and then you get a callback and then maybe another callback, but it was pretty quick. So my feeling was, is when I went into audition for the show, they had already been auditioning for quite a while, right? Mm -hmm. They were already kind of narrowing it down. So network was new to me. I had never read for network before, and it's a super scary process. And it was at the, um, it was at ABC, which was in these big century towers in Century City, really intimidating. And went, and there were a bunch of actresses there. And they brought you into a room and I read with Christopher Hewitt, who was cast as Mr. Belvedere. Did you? And all I all I remember was it was like this really dark room where, you know, like there were like bleacher seats and the people in the bleacher seats could see me, but I couldn't see them. So immediately you're just like, oh, I want my mom. Like, what is that? <laughs> yeah, you really? know? yeah, it was really intimidating. So you just go in there and you read the scene and then I remember just leaving thinking again I think I did good you know my my parents motto is do the best you can and then forget about it which really isn't easy to do when you're an actress and obsessed about obsessed about being a successful actress mm -hmm. you know you go and you're like sort of like have we heard anything did the agent call you know do we know anything um, and then I remember pretty soon after that network audition, uh, we got the call that I had gotten the part on the show. So I would say at, for the most part, it was a pretty easy process. And I don't think that's how it normally goes. Do you remember any of the other actresses that were there at the time for the audition? So funny thing, because I did not remember any of the actresses. And I would say a couple years ago, I went to lunch with my husband and Tracy Gold from Growing Pains and mm -hmm. her husband. And she mentioned to my husband, oh yeah, I auditioned against Tracy for the role of Heather on Belvedere. And I was like, what, you did? <laughs> I like, I had no idea. So I guest starred on her show during Belvedere and that was an awesome experience. So she's amazing. Yeah, that's pretty wild. Yeah, actually, I'm I'm still in uh, trying to get her on the show, but uh, we'll, we'll figure that one out. But um, she's great. Yeah, without a doubt. Uh, so, I, and we'll definitely talk about growing pains. And Jeremy Miller was on, and we got to talk about that. But okay. um, I want to go back because uh, Rob, I had Rob on the on the show, and 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 Rob is a friend, and and yeah. Rob had talked about his first audition and the same thing going up into the tower, and you know, like 
the intensity or whatever. But he was also like, hey, it was my first one, really like his first like real, like, you know, up for the lead in a show. So he was like, I just kind of did it. And, you know, it was yeah. kind of like, and he was out of there type of thing. Yeah. I had not heard about the dark, <laughs> the dark bleachers. That's really intimidating as a kid. Was, was that odd to walk into that room and you're like, is anybody there? You know, I actually think like that sort of probably not giving you warning just to see how you do, how you work under pressure. And that's truly what it was, was working under pressure and adapting. I mean, I literally met Chris, didn't know I was reading with the real Mr. Belvedere, had no clue, had no expectation, had no idea what was going to happen. So it's like literally just like throwing you into the situation and seeing how you react to it. Which doesn't surprise me that they did that, but mm -hmm. you know, it's a little intimidating. Yeah, that's pretty pretty uh, amazing though that you you read with Christopher Hewitt at the, at yeah. that time too. I mean that that's wild. I wasn't gonna go there right away, but since we brought him up, what was he like offset? What was he like as a person? Christopher was very. Uh, he had his moments when he was very fun and funny and fun to be around. And he also had moments where it was about the work and focusing and doing what we were supposed to do. You know, every taping, we would have the director's notes in his dressing room. So I think we did a taping at like four or 4.30 in the afternoons on Fridays. Then we would all break for dinner and then we would do another live taping at like either seven or 7.30. And after dinner, we would all do director's notes in his dressing room. We weren't allowed to chew gum in his room and we weren't allowed to cross our legs. Both things were habits of mine. And I, there wasn't a director's notes meeting where I had, I, there wasn't a time when someone didn't have to remind me, spit out my gum and cross my legs. So, wow. you know, I was, again, I was a kid, yeah. not a rebellious kid, but just, you know, not, didn't always think about those rules, it took a little bit to to get it under control. But, you know, he was a great guy, very well respected in our industry. Um, you know, there were times when we would film, you know, we would do our rehearsals and stuff and he wouldn't always agree with the jokes. He wouldn't always agree with the gags. You know, he didn't always agree with the American humor and, mm -hmm. you know, things didn't always align, but for the most part, it was figured out to a point where he was happy. Were you in touch with him until he passed away? Yes. Cool. Wow. Very yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Probably not as often as maybe um, Rob and Eileen were, because again, I was young, mm -hmm. but we definitely stayed in touch for sure. No, oh, that's, that's really cool. So yeah. look, you brought up growing pains right away. So I've got to... Yeah. Like all the Belvedere fans are wisely segueing, but that's why. Um, okay. So what was it like being on Growing Pains? I mean, I was a huge fan of that show as well. I mean, obviously, Kirk Cameron and Jeremy Miller, Tr Tracy Gold. What what uh, yeah. what was that cast like at that time? Well, full disclosure, I had a mad crush on Kirk Cameron, like every other young woman, you oh. know, did back then. He was, you know, a heartthrob, teen idol. Mm -hmm. And we were friends and we hung out as friends, but I definitely had a crush on him. And when they asked me to do a guest star role on the show, I was so excited. Their show reminded me so much of our set because they were a very, very tight knit group, very friendly with each other. Everybody got along. Everybody cared about each other. Um, so it was just a great experience. You know, it's always fun being on a different soundstage. Mm -hmm. They filmed at Warner Brothers, I believe, and we were at ABC Prospect. So it's just really cool meeting new people and seeing how their workings were. But it was very similar, just again, that close knit family situation. Did you ever tell uh, Kirk that you had a crush on him? I don't think I needed to tell anyone. I think it was pretty <laughs> obvious. I had no shame. So I, I'm pretty sure that was covered. I probably look like an idiot. Yeah. Oh, that is so funny. We never dated though. We never dated. Right. Did yeah. you did you get to know Jeremy at all? I did. In fact, um, I played his girlfriend. So it was more, I was more lined up with Jeremy than I was Kirk Cameron's character. Mm -hmm. Super nice guy. Yeah. 
Yeah, very cool. Yeah, he was great. He was wonderful to have on the show. I really enjoyed that. So what other, by the way, during that time, what other child actors were around you, like on the lot and things like that? Or who, who else was shooting around the Belvedere set? There wasn't, well, at one time, Sister Kate was filming across from us. And that's when I met Jason Priestley. He was one of the stars on that show before mm -hmm. he started doing 90210. Um, Juliette Lewis, the mm -hmm. famous movie actress, she was doing I Married Dora. That show was filming there. But that was it. And I wouldn't really say like any of us hung out really on when we were at the set because we all had different schedules different sound stages so we like maybe passed each other in the hallways jason and i hung out a little bit offset just as friends but that was pretty much it but the main thing that filmed where belvedere was was general hospital mm -hmm. and abc news that was the constant the constant and general hospital phil filmed kind of like on a whole other part of the lot mm -hmm. than we did we just knew they were there. We didn't really see them a whole lot. Yeah, I know right where you are. I know that yeah. a lot, actually. Yeah, yeah. That, that makes sense. Very cool. So have you stayed close with uh, with most of the cast that obviously, you know, still alive? 100%. Very close. Very close with uh, Bob and his wife, Judy. I love them dearly. Um, talk to Eileen all the time. Talk to Rob. Talk to Bryce. In fact, uh Rob and Bryce and I just saw each other, I think it was like two weeks ago. We filmed a couple birthday messages for some friends of ours um, that are like a surprise birthday message. Uh, yeah, I mean, we went to, I think we went to Benny Hanna's like a couple months ago because we hadn't seen each other in a while. And we met at Benny Hanna's and we posted a picture on social media and people were like, going a little bit crazy like oh my god that's so cool you guys hang out like did so many people recognize you it's like <laughs> nobody recognized <us. laughs> nobody <laughs> which, so. which i guess on some levels is probably nice i mean i'm sure it goes both it, ways it doesn't bother me it's very sweet that people think we still get recognized but no it was it was fun it was really great to catch up and see everybody are you um and you, you mentioned Bob Euchre, obviously. What was uh what was Bob like uh at that time? Because I, I always, you know, I, I love Bob Euchre and I'm from Milwaukee, by the way, originally, and, yeah. and all of that. So I mean, I'm a big fan, but what was he like as a you know offset? I mean, compared to what we saw on the on the show. Well, Bob and I were really, really close. He called me Kitten. He called me Kitten on the show and off the show. We were really close. We had a great bond. Um, he was like a father to me, seriously. He, I visited him in Milwaukee one summer, stayed at his house. I flew out there by myself and just hung out with them. They asked me to do this like, charity fashion show for, for the Milwaukee Brewers I think I stayed with them for about a week. We went to Brewer Games. I got to hang out with him in the booth. I went on his boat. Um, we just kind of hung out. I mean, he was wow. literally just like a really important part of my life. You know, I don't know if you know this, John, but for all of the filming of Belvedere, my mom was um, struggling with cancer. Oh. She had breast cancer and she eventually passed from breast and bone cancer. And she actually passed away during one of our tapings and I wasn't notified of that until after our show finished taping but Bob and Judy really took great care of me as did everybody else in the cast um you know I, I literally had a second family which was great and it was hard for my dad because my dad still had to work a full-time job mm-hmm while I was on set all the time, um, my parents got me a guardian uh, that took me to set every day and, you know, took care of me because I was still a minor. So I think a lot of these relationships grew from the fact that everybody knew what was happening in my personal life during the course of the entire run of Belvedere. Wow. Did, yeah. did, um, and I don't, I don't mean this in a cold, cold way, by the way, so please don't take it that way, but when your mom passed uh, during the taping, I mean, it's always a shock when someone passes. I've been through it myself. Absolutely. Um, but but 
was that were you like stunned like were you somewhat expecting it then or was it just like oh what what that's actually a really good question we of course we were expecting it because my sister and i my sister carrie we knew that our mom had really been struggling and my dad always came to the tapings on friday after he got off of work and he was driving us home from abc prospect and we were literally on Franklin Boulevard, which is the street that runs mm -hmm. into ABC Prospect. We weren't even at the freeway yet. And he said, guys, I have something to tell you. And I knew immediately what he mm -hmm. was about to tell us. And it was a very long ride home, very emotional, very difficult. Um, and the cast was, and the crew were amazing. I mean, everybody came to my mom's funeral. They were all very loving and kind and understanding. Wow. Wow. That, yeah. that is just really, really amazing. Did, um, yeah. uh, what, <laughs> sorry, that, that always gets to me when somebody tells that's me. That's okay. Me. It's a hard thing but, to transition out of. So <laughs> yeah, no, and don't worry about it. I'm not worried about that. I mean, that's what okay. this is all about. But, um, so with, um, with, so you stayed, have you stayed close then with Bob? Yeah, still close with Bob. In fact, I just talked to Judy a couple weeks ago. Um, I haven't seen them in a while just because they've been, you know, he's been busy with baseball and stuff, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but yeah, still keep in touch. Absolutely. I gotcha. So why, why did you start acting by the way, in the first place? Um, I started acting. First of all, I didn't start acting. I started dancing. I did a lot of dancing. I was really into dance and, uh, there was a show called the Tim Conway show mm -hmm. way back in the day. Yeah, And they had dancers on that show. They had something called the Don Crichton Dancers. Don Crichton was a choreographer. And I auditioned and I got cast as one of the dancers. But I didn't end up taking the job because I had just gotten a commercial agent. And that commercial agent was sending me out on auditions. And in my first year of having a commercial agent, I booked 17 national commercials. Wait, what? Wait. Yeah. How many did 17 you national Commercials. I mean, the money in commercials is ridiculous. Oh, gosh. Ridiculous. And I, again, I was a kid and they just said, do this. And I did it. And I didn't think twice about it. I wasn't, I wasn't self-conscious. I was just a very outgoing young kid that loved to be in front of the camera. So wow. there were certain things that I was booking that I actually was like, okay, I'm not going to do this. We're going to do this and really leaned on my agent at the time to sort of guide me. So that's how I got into acting was really from dancing and then getting a commercial agent. That is, I just love, I just love. How I make it sound like, easy, but can I tell you being in show business is not for everyone and it's really hard. And most of the time it sucks. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I have an acting background. That's how I know Rob and all that yeah. too. So I know, and it is, it's extremely hard. That's where you got to every, all those successes, you just soak them in, yes. you know? Um, yes. So that's wild though. 17 commercials. I mean, anybody that's out there, I'm sorry, that is not the norm. That is incredible. It so. is not the norm. Now, out of those commercials, the one that I am, I am very, was very excited about, and this wasn't in the same year, the first year, it mm -hmm. was shortly after that. Um, I was obsessed with Michael Jackson, just yeah. sort of giving you the real deal about me, Kirk Cameron, yeah. Michael Jackson. I mean, my room was plastered with Michael Jackson. Oh, I could where I you. lived, I lived, grew up in Woodland Hills. And I was, again, obsessed with Michael Jackson. And one day I'm on my street in Woodland Hills, Tierra Street. And I see this car drive by. It was a small street. I see this car drive by. It's like a classic Mercedes. And there's a guy in there that I swear is Michael Jackson oh, on Tierra Street in Woodland Hills. <laughs> and I follow this car who's going to the end of the cul-de-sac on my street. I see Michael Jackson get out of the car and go into the house. Now, my parents think, listen, you're just obsessed with Michael Jackson. You're probably, you know, seeing things. There's no reason why Michael Jackson would be on Tierra Street in Woodland Hills. It's just not happening. It's so wild. So being the gutsy kid that I am, I waited for Michael Jackson to leave. 
And I go up to the house and I knock on the door. And I remember their last name was Fleming. I knew that that was the Fleming household. So I go and knock on the door. They don't know me from anybody, but somehow I knew that was the Fleming household. And I asked, I swear I saw Michael Jackson here. Was that Michael Jackson? And they said, yes, that they go to the same church that he was at their house. I asked if I could bring over a letter, if they would give Michael Jackson the letter. You know, I did all these things. Within a week after that, I got an audition for the Pepsi commercial with Michael Jackson. And what? I remember my dad took me to the audition. It was a Saturday. And having a Saturday audition is not the norm. Mm -hmm. So I had an audition on Saturday. And I literally said to the universe, I am getting this commercial. I am booking this commercial because I will. And I am going to work with Michael Jackson. And this is just to show you when you're, again, when you're a kid, you don't have all of those voices in your head, like you're fat, you're ugly, you're not going to get right, it. That's you're right. That's right. You know, you just kind of go and you do it. And I wanted it so badly. So I went on the audition and the audition consisted of, they brought in four kids at a time. They played Michael Jackson's music and they said, dance, dance to Michael Jackson's music. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I did it. like the whole like the whole Billie Jean routine that he had done. I think it was like the American Music Awards. Like I did it all. Like I did it all. I did not leave anything to chance. <laughs> By the time we left Hollywood and got drove back to Woodland Hills, my mom answered the door and said, I don't know what you did, but you booked the Michael Jackson commercial. What? And I literally lost my shit. <laughs> I, oh, lost my I was so excited. So yeah, that's another one of those, like, it was just meant to be. And I put it into the universe that this is what I wanted to do. And I was going to make it happen. That is the coolest, coolest story. Couple of things. One, did he, did he get a letter back to you or did he, did he ever no. sign anything? No. Okay. No, and he then... <laughs> didn't. However, I will say when we were on set, he signed eight by 10 photos for all of us. And he invited all of us to go to Dodger Stadium to see him perform. That's another funny story if you have time, but yes. I have, he was I have a lot of time, Tracy. Tell okay, me the story okay. about Dodger Stadium, please. So during, so after we finished filming, uh, do you remember Rick D's? Well, maybe you oh, don't because you- Kiss you FM. Been, yeah, Kiss FM. Kiss FM was doing a contest where you had to write on an index card um, all of your information and you had to mail it into Kiss FM for a drawing to get tickets to see Michael Jackson. Well, at the time we had already finished filming the commercial and we didn't know that his production company was going to reach out to the cast to invite them to his concert. So you had to write it on index cards. So I begged my parents to buy me as many packages of index cards that <laughs> they were willing to buy. And I gave my allowance money to pay for the stamps and everything. And after school, I would fill out my name and information on all these cards. I sent in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of index oh cards because I God. wanted to see him in concert. And the way that Rick Dees did it is you had to like, you had to be listening to the radio to hear them announce your name at the top of the hour. And everyone that knew I was obsessed with Michael Jackson, when I heard my name, all my friends were calling me going, oh my God, Rick D said your name, you gotta call in. <laughs> and so I called in and we got tickets. Well, one day I'm at school and my mom gets a call from the production company saying, Michael's inviting the cast to, and my mom's like, oh, we already got tickets. No. And, you know, my mom didn't, she didn't know any better. You know, she was a very selfless, wonderful person. And so they, my, I, I, when I got home, I was a little pissed off at my mom. I'm like, you have to call back. Like those seats are probably like way better. And they had already given away those tickets, but it's okay. My dad took me and my childhood friend, Lori, to the concert with my Rick D's tickets. He stayed in the car because it was too far to drive home. Oh, he wow. stayed in the car and made him this whole picnic dinner that he could eat in his car while we went and enjoyed the concert. Oh my gosh, is yeah. that cool? That's just, that, that's a great story. I, I love that. Did you, well, he signed the photos. Did you actually get a chance to, you know, like meet him, like say hi or? Meet him, talk to him. His whole family was there. The, the Jackson Five were all in the mm. commercial and yeah, everyone was just super nice. Oh, really? Just no attitude? Just no, no attitude down to earth. Yeah. 
Oh my gosh. Yeah. You don't live that far from them, actually. I mean, they had that house in Encino. I know that. Yes. Because on my 13th birthday, my parents said, what do you want to do for your birthday? I wanted to, believe it or not, go to Benihana's, which is the same place I went to with Rob and Bryce, go to Benihana's. And then I wanted to park in front of Michael Jackson's house for an hour. That was my, my gift. (laughs) So my dad, my dad and I sat in front of his house and we just waited for the chance that I would see Michael Jackson. Now, a car came out and the the glove came out, the sequin glove and waved at everybody. Now, of course, as a kid, and my dad's not going to tell me, that's just like probably a plant just to Mm -hmm. like get people off the street, like go home. He left. He's not here anymore. But I just was just the beaded glove. I was just so excited. I think it's cool that whether it was or it wasn't, how cool was that? That you even saw the beaded glove come out. That's that's really fun. Exactly. Wow. Great As you can tell, I was a little obsessive I, compulsive child. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, you you know, it's so funny. In in anything that I've read, anything that I've I've heard you on, whatever, I and even talking with you now, it's so obvious you were just like, you know, balls to the walls, like, what do you need me to do? And let's just do this. Like you yeah. you, you had no filter. No. Wow. No wonder you were, you were successful at all of that. I mean, that, that, that's a huge thing. That's uh, wow. That's really cool. So when you were on Belvedere, by the way, were during that time, were you recognized or was it more like you could step away and have a normal life? Uh, A little of both. I was recognized. I don't think Belvedere was, it wasn't as big in the ratings as growing pains. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, or family ties at the time, you know, there were Mm -hmm. a lot of really, really, really big family sitcoms. Um, but yeah, I was recognized, but not to the point where I couldn't go to the mall or go to Disneyland. It wasn't like that at all. Did you appreciate that? Or were you as a kid thinking, geez, I wish I was more like well-known or whatever, right? Um, no, I actually like blending in Mm -hmm. even, even now. It's, you know, when people come up to me, which is very rare, Mm -hmm. usually what it is, is they'll say, God, your voice sounds so familiar. Mm -hmm. You know that I get that a lot. Um, But no, I, I'm very good with just blending in like a normal person. You know, I've had, I've had quite a few people on the show that, you know, uh, or I've spoken to that have, have been a child actor or whatever. And many have gone through issues and had their moments and all of that. And I got to say, you, Rob, I have not had the opportunity yet to talk with Bryce, but I've, I've seen his background and what he's done. Um, and then Bob, of course, uh, Eileen, you're all just, you know, like, like I, I, Rob and I were talking about this before, or we've talked about it in the past. You're just like normal people. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and I mean that we're in boring, such a complimentary no way. What, what is it that you think that all of you kind of came out of this, you know, like able to cope with, normal life and and do things I honestly don't know because I know people that have had a really good upbringing and great parents and pretty grounded and still got into trouble and sure people that have had a rough childhood and did okay so I'm not really sure why we all just got we're all very blessed that we've had the life that we've had yeah, it's pretty wild. I mean, it really is. It's it's not the norm. So it's 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 pretty cool. I mean, Jeremy, Jeremy, I got I I mean, I love the guy, but he he's the first one to come out and say it tore, you know, I got totally messed up, you know, on a lot mm-hmm. of things. And yeah. and then he, you know, he's back and he's doing great, but it's just it's just crazy, you know. I, um I will say it is a bit it is a bit jarring coming off of a successful, well, I'll speak for myself, coming off of sure. a successful TV show. It was not easy getting jobs after that. It was not easy getting cast in things. I did a few things, but not a lot and nothing huge. Mm-hmm. Um, my very last audition where I decided, okay, I'm good. I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. So I auditioned for the executive producers of Friends for a pilot. And they brought me back like, oh my God, I want to say like 10 or 11 times, just kept bringing me back, bringing me back. That's a lot. Bringing me back. It was a lot. And I just couldn't figure out 
why I wasn't enough, why it wasn't good enough. What what were they looking for? Mm -hmm. And they ended up casting um, Hillary Swank, who's amazing. Um, but I, I think there just there just comes a point where you realize how lucky you were to have steady work mm -hmm. and how grateful it was. But like I said, it was easy to get it. It was not easy to get jobs after it. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that it wasn't a high, high, high rating show, mm -hmm. but it lasted quite a while. It had its own specific audience. Maybe it was a blessing. I mean, yeah. maybe it was a blessing. I mean, honestly. I'm very happy with my life. So yeah, you're I'm, all just I'm really good. nice people. And it's just nice. Um, did did you um, did you hang out with uh, other child actors uh, during the run of the show at all? Um, other child actors, I didn't really. I mean, I went to a bunch of, you know, networking events and publicity events. I had a publicist for many, many years that had me doing a lot of these like you know, the Hollywood Christmas parade mm -hmm. and different events for charities and stuff like that. Um, but no, I just, I hung out with my non show business friends. I gotcha. Rob, yeah. you know, when I interviewed Rob, he mentioned this one event that I guess every year would come around like the, the teen magazines or some group like that. And they would bring all the child stars to, together for like a weekend and you go, he said, you know, you go, you'd have a blast for the weekend and their deal was they would just, you know, get pictures of different people together and then they'd have like, you know, their publicity from that. Did you ever do any, anything like that? I remember going to events and stuff like that and them taking a ton of photos and then it would show up in different places. Mm -hmm. um, I do remember stuff like that, but whether it was like a specific thing where they got a bunch of just teens together to do, no, I don't remember that. What but, uh, the one thing that I I remember from one of the interviews is you talked about your birthdays and and it I, I just was curious, it, like you had one birthday where it's like the General Hospital, you know, like people from General Hospital showed up, whatever. But the thing that caught me at my ear was it was like. I don't even know some of these people. What what was that like for you? Like to have a birthday on set and they would just have people show up that you didn't even know? Um, well, I knew the general hospital people. Yeah. Um, there was there was one actor, he was like a Scottish actor. I I think his name was Ian, I want to say. And I remember he was really good looking, really nice guy, great actor. And I remember, I think they had him like sing me happy birthday or something like that. And there were a bunch of teen actors there. Like, I think Soleil Moon Fry was there and Kirk was there and a bunch of other people. Um, so, you know, it, there's some calculated moves made when you're mm -hmm. in TV and then there's an opportunity to get these types of people together for magazines or whatever. But it was never like, oh, I don't know who these people are. What are they doing at my birthday party? <laughs> it yeah, wasn't right, like that right. at all. Um, but it was it was very sweet because Belvedere always made a big deal about all of our birthdays. Hmm. You know, they always did really nice things. I always had a cake. And, you know, even when we filmed the pilot, I I think I mentioned we had only been working together for just a few days and it was my 12th birthday. And I remember they brought me a cake and it was in the shape of a hamburger. And I just thought that was like the coolest thing ever. That is so cool. That shows right from out of the gates. They care. Yes, 100%. That's, that's really cool. So you had a lot of guest stars on that show. Um, who would you say were your favorite guest stars? Okay, let me, tr well, I remember um, Fergie from, you know, Fergie, the rock star. Yeah, she yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, she was great, super sweet. Um, we had Jason Bateman on the show. He was like obsessed with uh, Marsha, the one who played my mom. Mm -hmm. I think my favorite episode was when we had all the baseball greats on the show to celebrate oh. Bob. You know, there was all these amazing baseball players like Mickey Mantle was there, Willie Mays, like all these mm -hmm. wonderful people. And we got to film on location, which was fun for us. Um, I would say that was probably my favorite. Did you realize that? The, I, I know I know the episode you're talking about. Did you realize at the time just how crazy it was that you were around all these guys? 
I did realize how crazy it was because all the grown men, all the cast members, and then like their dads and brothers and uncles, like everybody was on <laughs> set that day with like yeah. things to get signed and all this other stuff. And it was just like, wow, this is a really big deal. This is Oh, really that's so deal. funny. I didn't even think about all like the other, you know, the crew. And oh everybody. my God. Yeah, it Come was on. a big deal. Oh yeah, that's that's huge. I mean, these are like classics, you know? Yes. Yes. So um, when you, you know, it's funny, Rob and I talked a little bit about this when the show was, it was canceled, then it wasn't, you guys were brought back and all that. How did you deal with that at your age? Cause you were the youngest one, uh, not the youngest one, but you were younger. I mean, than Rob, yeah. how did you, how did that affect you when it was like, oh, it looks like we're canceled. Oh, they're bringing us back. I don't think I understood the validity of it as much as the adults did. Hmm. I really don't think I did. I think it was like, oh, I'm going to be out of work and I'll just go get another job. I don't think it really sunk in the way it did for the others, probably because I didn't quite understand how hard it is to get on another job. Sorry, my dogs are barking. I didn't even um, hear them. Oh, yeah. really? Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, because again, I got Belvedere pretty easy, easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in my mind, I was like, oh, I'll just get another job, <laughs> you know, which was not the case after Belvedere ended. Um, right. But I do remember everybody going through that and everyone being a little bit freaked out. One one thing that Rob and I did, and I and I listened to your interview with him, and I don't believe he brought this up. Mm -hmm. um, we put together this really cool film him and I worked on together uh, to show at the rap party. And one of the things we we wrote like these skits and we kind of edited it all together to kind of celebrate the cast and the crew and everything we had been through. And one of the things Rob and I thought about was going and interviewing Brandon Stoddard, who at the time was the president of ABC. Mm -hmm. And we reached out to his assistant or whatever and said, hey, we're doing this film for the rap party. Would he be open to us interviewing him? Now, mind you, Rob and I didn't tell the executive producers. We didn't tell anybody what we were doing. Wow. You know, we were just like, this is what we're doing. We're going to put this film together. It's going to be awesome. It's going to rock. Let's go. <laughs> and so we call Brandon Sauter's office and we go down to Century City and we interview him. And it was it was not scripted. Rob and I just kind of improvised it, kind of had an idea of what we were going to do. But one of the things we did was we went and interviewed him and just basically asked him, hey, are we coming back for next season? And, you know, like, oh, my gosh. On the spot. And Brandon Stoddard was amazing. He was so funny. And his response was like, yeah, sure. Well, we'll see. I'll let you know. You know, I'll have my people call your people. <laughs> that was the interview. And it was like really cute and funny. And I remember we edited this whole thing together and we played it for the executive producers and they were literally blown away that we went and interviewed Brandon Stoddard, didn't tell them they loved his reaction because listen, if he wasn't bringing us back, he probably wouldn't have agreed to do the interview right? or, or answered kind of funny tongue in cheek. Right. Yeah. So it was, it was just amazing. I mean, times were so different back then, right? Yeah. You know, you weren't thinking about who you're going to offend, who you're going to upset. It just was freer. Well, I mean, I just love that. Once again, that like, just go for it attitude. You yeah. know, it's like, ah, why not? Let's go do that. We'll yeah. interview the president as well. Yeah. That is really Funny, like really funny. I love though that, you know, you're absolutely right. I love that he took the, um, you know, he he not only took the call, but he set it up and he came right on camera and did it. I mean, today yeah. it'd be like, I'm sorry, but we'll get back to you, you know, because uh, they'd yeah. be worried, you know, about something. Yeah, it, it wasn't like that at all. It was really cool. And working with Rob and doing that was so much fun. I mean, it was probably like my first time doing something creative and artistic from the ground up and putting this film together and, and it was a blast and everyone really appreciated it i mean it went over really really well wow that's pretty cool and then of course i mean rob goes on and basically he just stays that oh, yeah. course and he goes and does yeah you know, now he's mr that's documentary filmmaker that was know? his passion exactly yeah, so funny. Just wild how things how things work out. Um, one thing I didn't want to forget, 
I had heard this in an interview and you mentioned your guardian and I was like, I got to remember that story. Okay. What can you tell that story about how you got your guardian? Cause that's crazy to me. So I don't remember what story you're referring to. I had a couple guardians. First well, of the all, the one where you were in high school and that's how you met oh, that yes. guardian. Oh yes. yes. I had a guardian. Okay. So how she became my guardian. Yeah was I was in high school. It was my first year at El Camino High School in Woodland Hills. I don't remember who thought this was a good idea, but somebody wanted me to go to real school and like go be a real person at a real school. And Belvedere had already been on for years. And it was my freshman year. I basically didn't go to much junior high because I was tutored on set. So mm -hmm. I went to, to school at El Camino and a girl there was definitely picking on me, like fully picking on me, like, you oh, know, man. calling me names and getting in my face. And I, I didn't even know this person. Like, I don't know who this person is. I don't know anybody. I'm not coming from another school with all my friends, you know? Right. I was new. Everyone was new to me. And I was extremely shy and intimidated because I had never been in this type of situation before. Going from elementary school to like a half a year of junior high and then not no more junior high and then going straight into your freshman year of high school is a big change. Oh, it's a huge change. Huge. Yes. And this girl literally <laughs> picked me up and threw me against the lockers. Oh. And it was really, really scary. It was not something that I was used to. I didn't know how to fight. I didn't know what was happening. Mm -hmm. I was just there looking for my math class. Like <laughs> and a girl came up and stopped the fight, which really wasn't much of a fight because I really wasn't doing anything, just getting my, my butt kicked and right. stopped the fight, brought me into the office and her name was Tracy and she was a narc at the school. A narc? A narc. Yeah. It's like somebody that's basically looks like a high schooler and is looking for people doing drugs or doing bad things. Like they kind of become a student. So nobody knows that they're really like campus police, so to speak. It's like 21 Jump Street or something. Yeah. Wow. It, it, no joke. It's the same thing. Wow. It's the same thing. It wasn't Johnny Depp that saved me, though. It was a woman. <laughs> so she uh, became friends with me and my my mom or dad at the time. So my mom was really sick. And they offered the, her the job of being my guardian. Because at the time, I needed somebody to drive me to set stay with me on set and drive me home every day because I wasn't driving. That is wild. I mean, really, that is wild that that became your guardian. That's like, yeah, yeah. Really so wild. I went to high school for a day. <laughs> I, I didn't yeah. even make it the whole day. Yeah, what a tough experience. Not an uncommon story, by the way. I will yeah. tell you, almost every child actor I've talked to that has made the route back to school has been beat up. Oh, it, really? they, they get bullied. Yep. I'm telling you, I had on uh, Stanley and Barry Livingston for my three sons. It happened to them. Um, I'm trying to think of who else is in there, but yes, very common. Yeah. I, I, kids are mean. Kids can be mean. Yeah, they you know? can. They can, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Did um, uh, when the final episode of, well, actually, before I go there, what were your favorite episodes? People always ask me to ask that. So what were your favorite episodes of Belvedere? Um, I would say one of my favorite episodes, two of them come to mind. One is the one where I almost get date raped. And it, it's not my favorite episode because it was about me. It was my favorite episode because during rehearsals all week long, I had no problem crying. Mm -hmm. When we rehearsed the scene, there's a scene in the backyard with me and Belvedere where he figures out what happened to me or almost happened to me. And I come out and talk to him about it. And during rehearsals, I had no problems getting emotional. But then when we went to tape the show, I think I was just, I just couldn't get myself there. Mm -hmm. And I remember the director at the time, Don Corvan, came out and he pulled me aside and he just had a talk with me. And everyone was tired. Everyone wanted to go home. And the, literally the weight was on my shoulders to perform and get it right. And he just pulled me aside and had like a really nice conversation with me 
um, which basically was a nice way of saying, get your shit together. We have to do this scene so we can all go home. And, <laughs> and then I did this scene and it was just like, it was cool because it made me grow. It was a challenge. Something wasn't working. He helped me get there and we did it. And it turned out to be a great scene. It's one of my favorite scenes. And my other favorite show is it was a Christmas episode and um, Belvedere and I were uh, Christmas past and present. And we oh, were in cool. these big Christmas boxes and they had us flying through the air, kind of like Peter Pan on oh, this I love it. pulley system. Love it. And it was just like, it was so much fun for me, but everyone was very worried about hoisting Chris and keeping him up in the air. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's an older gentleman and God mm -hmm. forbid, you know, he falls or something happens. But oh, I yeah. just remember the intensity of that scene making it work was really cool. Oh, that sounds so fun. That's something I've always wanted to do. I always loved that stuff with like Peter Pan and that. That's cool. Yeah, you, it was you're awesome. lucky. Um, it was awesome. So what what uh as far as pranks i'm just curious because uh, were there ever any pranks done on the set you know with i don't know euchre or you know you and rob or you know a anybody pranks all the time oh really I've, I've, to I've told this one in interviews before but on my birthday bob euchre um blew up a bunch of balloons all over the set and uh it, he had it set up that when I entered the room for one of my scenes, all the balloons were there. And I remember walking in just going, oh, these are funny looking balloons. Like, what's up with these balloons? And everyone started laughing because they weren't actually balloons. They were condoms that they blew up. And like, that went way, like right over my head. Yeah, I like, love that it was you too. Yeah. yeah. And then they always played pranks on Chris. Chris was the easiest one to play pranks on. And it wasn't us kids playing pranks on him. It was usually adults, usually Bob playing pranks on Chris. Um, you know, and Chris also was supposed to be on his diet and Bob would always like make these really fattening fried sausage sandwiches and sneak them over to Chris, even though he was like on heart medication oh. and wasn't supposed to be eating that stuff. It's like Bob was like Chris's kind of like drug dealer. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know, he knew if Chris wanted something, Bob was going to hook him up with like really bad foods. Oh my gosh. But they did the same thing to Bryce. They would hide candy underneath the set. So Bryce would eat candy and he'd get like totally strung out on sugar and then nobody could control him because he was like, that was like fun. That was like our entertainment. <laughs> oh my gosh i oh. love that you did stuff like that you yeah. know it, it always amazed me um to the difference between bob Uecker and christopher hewitt christopher hewitt is like the classic actor you know what i mean like the background yeah. and all of that and then you have bob Uecker, you know yes. who is Two like totally man, different whatever. people but found their common ground they were yeah. like best buds absolutely that's crazy. That is just crazy that they they came together. Did did you feel that right from the the get go? Like when you yes. first met them and stuff? Yes. Yeah. There there was an ease from the from the beginning, and Bob probably spearheaded that. He just makes you feel like you're so important, and so he's so down to earth, right, and approachable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Were you, by the way, were you, you know, I mean, I know that you and Rob and Bryce are close, close now. Were you close from the get go or was this a, a kind of a gradual build that happened? Because obviously you're all at different ages at that point. I was really close to Bryce because we were in school together. We were school age because Rob was already in college. So he mm -hmm. didn't have to do certain school hours. So Bryce and I were forced to be in a room together for hours at a time do our schooling um so Bryce and I became close and then Rob and I were close too because in some ways what Bryce was really young compared to me but Rob was I was closer in age well I wasn't really closer in age to Rob but Rob and I had a lot in common too mm -hmm. and then I was really close to Bob oh I got you I yeah. got you um the uh God, what was I going to ask you about there I just I I, I just, oh the finale episode yes um one did you I'm trying to remember and just off the top of my head one did you know it was the finale episode and and two uh do you remember the tape that taping yes yes and yes I, we all knew that it was the final episode mm -hmm. 
And I don't think there was any question whether or not we were coming back. I think we all knew we weren't coming back is how I remember it. And I remember it just being a really sad day. And when we taped the final episode, I broke down and started crying. I cried during my lines. Um, I mean, it was like authentic. I was saying goodbye to Mr. Belvedere. Mm -hmm. And I was literally saying goodbye to Mr. Belvedere. And it was really hard. It was really hard. We were all really, really, really sad. But, you know, when you know it's coming, you're kind of dealing with it along the way. And then when it's the final taping, it's just like, oh, wow, this is it. This is this is it. This is the last time we're all going to be together like this. When when did you end up seeing uh, Christopher Hewitt again, actually, after the end of that? Um, I saw him a couple times. I don't remember exactly whether it was like going to a movie or going out to lunch or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember going to his funeral service, but I definitely saw him a couple times. I don't think I saw him as much as Rob did, but mm -hmm. I did see him a couple times before he passed. Wow. Wow. And what's, you know, I, we've talked about most of the cast except Eileen. How, what's your relationship with Eileen and what was it like then? My relationship with Eileen is great. Um, super tight with Eileen. We talk on the phone. Um, I probably call her, reach out to her about once a month. I've probably seen Eileen the most um, because we'll get together with this group supervisor, Shelly, and the stage manager, Anita, and we'll all four of us meet for lunch, maybe like once a year, once or twice a year. Um, so yeah, close with Eileen. In fact, I sold a house in Studio City. And when I was out there, my old house, the house that I bought when I was 15, I ended up selling this year for uh, selling, representing the seller who was the lady that bought the house for me when I bought it. Oh, come uh, on. Um, so I would go and see Eileen because she lives in Studio City. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was, a, that was a cool story. <laughs> that was great. The house that you bought that you sold. So I bought, when, I bought this house when seller. I was 15. I lived there for a while. Then I got uh, married to my first husband, Aaron. And we decided we were going to move to Oregon. So we sold the house to this couple, uh, Frank and Betty Bernie. And Frank Bernie was a character actor. And they bought yeah. the house. They lived in that house forever. And I stayed in touch with them because I told them, I love this house. So I'm going to have to stay in touch with you because I need to know how you guys are doing and how much you love the house and you can never sell it. So I stayed in touch with them and they would send me a Christmas card every year. And they would always sign it from Blue Heaven because it was a blue house. And oh. they called it their Blue Heaven. And oh. we traded Christmas cards for years. 17 wow. years ago, I got into real estate. And, you know, when you get into real estate, you put everybody that you know into your database. Mm -hmm. Like, John, mm -hmm. you're going to be in my database now. <laughs> and, um, you know, I'm constantly marketing to everybody and stayed in touch with them. And unfortunately, Frank passed away not too long ago. Um, and I represented Betty selling the house, which was my, my house that I bought when I was 15 and her house that she mm. absolutely loved. And it was, it was emotional selling that house. It's so many memories there with my late husband, Aaron, and raising our daughter, Sarah, um, her memories with Frank. And she moved to New York city and bought this beautiful, beautiful apartment overlooking Central Park. I mean, she's very happy. Isn't that isn't that wild? Um, yeah. Hey, by the way, your your kids, um, how old are they? And did they go into the business at all? Hell no, thank God. They <laughs> did not. Uh, um, my son is, I always get their ages wrong. Uh, my son is 24 and he graduated USC. Um, he graduated in astronautical engineering and he works at a great company in El Segundo doing engineering work. And my daughter graduated UC Berkeley structural engineering. She's 26 years old. She lives in San Francisco area and works for a great company doing structural engineering. I have really great, very smart kids. Math went way over my head and landed on my kids. Yeah, yep. <laughs> they are really super smart. That's so funny. I'm very similar, actually. My kids are really good at math. I can barely do it. So um, my art, my sister Carrie and I, our dad was a mathematician. He was an engineer. Mm. So like sitting at the kitchen table and doing math with our dad was hell. It was <laughs> awful because it was his way of explaining math was 
just a little secret here. My name, Tracy, is named after trace, like to trace a graph. My dad mm -hmm. wanted to be mathematical terms. And my sister, Carrie, is to like carry over a number. So that's how we got our names. It was oh, very my <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Did you uh, did you ever uh, at any? Well, I don't know. Maybe maybe your, your first one. Or did you ever go? Oh, I should put them in into the business. Was that ever? When my daughter was a baby. I thought she would be great because she was, I mean, both my kids were super cute and adorable. But when I had Sarah, my firstborn, I was like, oh, let's get her an agent. We got her an agent right away. Her first audition was for um, Michelin tires. And the way that you're, if you brought your baby in, the only way your baby was going to get cast is the mom had to be able to hand over the baby to a man dressed in an all blue suit because it's green screen, right? Oh. That's like, you know, the Michelin man is like, all in like a blue suit or a green screen, a green suit against the green screen or whatever, yeah. holding the baby that's propped up inside like these tires. And basically, if your baby didn't scream bloody murder as you're handing them to a stranger, all dressed in a blue suit, <laughs> then you are considered like you made the cut. Sarah was not having that at all. And yeah, it, and I'll tell you, it's a lot of driving, a lot of schlepping mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with a baby. Sometimes babies don't like being in the car for that long. You know, a lot of people timing it right. Like if your audition's at two, but they're usually napping at two, you know, it's a whole thing. Yeah. Gives you a lot of love long. for your mom when, when she was doing it. That's for darn yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. Hey, um, by the way, I, 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 you mentioned that your husband passed and by the way, I'm, I'm obviously I'm very sorry that that happened. Um, on the other side of that coin, it's pretty impressive by the way, to have two kids that have come out on that level, you know, kudos to you. That that takes a lot as a single mom. So nice we job. We had a we had very uh we had very supportive grandparents that lived close by, and you know, I was I was a single mom, but we I definitely had help from grandparents and stuff like that helping me. And but yeah, for the most part, it was the three of us wow. here and figuring it out. Yeah. You know, figuring it out. Well, you you did it. You definitely did it. What um so why, you know, basically you mentioned the Hillary Swank thing and then why did you say, you know, okay, I I'm done cuz you know, well, I guess you you did a bunch of movies though in like 94. I mean, that was your big I mean, I looked at your thing. A I'm bunch like, is being very complimentary. Well, I mean, there were there were quite a few projects, okay? Um, okay. What about, <laughs> that's great. You're like, yeah. Um, but interesting who, who was in them, by the way, on a couple of these. Um, After Midnight, that was one. I, I saw Marge Helgenberger in there from CSI. Yeah. yeah. Did you know her then? No, because it was, the movies were filmed in vignettes. So mm. I wasn't in her segment. Okay. All right. Yeah. Interesting though, how like certain people that were in these, uh, Mirror, yeah. Mirror 2, uh, Raven, the great or Raven dance. Yeah. Um, you know, you've got Roddy McDowell and Sally Kellerman. Did you, yeah. did you work with them? I did. They were super nice people. They were yeah. great. I did remember you... for the audition, I had to do a scene with Sally Kellerman. Yeah. She was great. Were they, did you recognize how important these people were like you know uh roddy mcdowell yes i think at the time i didn't quite know who sally kellerman was at the time um but roddy mcdowell definitely was he was he a true like gentleman type super yeah great yeah i i i have not had any bad experiences with actors not that's away. pretty cool yeah um obviously the other one is mark ruffalo and you, yes. you, you know, you have your, you actually have your moment with him, so to speak. W so my husband, I'm married now to Frank. My husband uh -huh. is a huge superhero fan. Oh yeah. I'm, I am not, I would <laughs> rather do anything, but sit through a three and a half hour long superhero movie. I love him. But anyway, oh my God, my husband loves him. And he's an expert. He knows all about everything in the, how it was in the comics versus how it is. He's diehard. Anyway, I think him knowing that I worked with Mark Ruffalo was like a big deal when we were dating, like a big deal. Oh, is Mark that Ruffalo, cool? Mark Ruffalo was great. I mean, we, we, he really hadn't done a lot. I think Raven dance was one of his first jobs. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Wow. So, 
but it was nice he, very nice guy though right like he's he's oh, also pretty normal himself right totally normal down to earth but i mean after that i mean he went on to do a lot of really 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 big jobs mm -hmm. so I, i'm assuming he's the same person he was a really good guy I, you know what i i just on a casual thing, saw him about five years ago in a lobby of a hotel in the Midwest. Totally, total fluke moment. The guy could not have been nicer. And it wasn't okay. one of those where it was like, hey, are you? It was like just two guys talking, yeah. he and I. And and I was like, actually, he's Mark Ruffalo. Super nice guy. But anyway. Yeah, that's um, cool. I love that. And the other ones, okay, we got Drag Strip Girl, which we had uh, Tracy Lords is in that. Natasha. Yeah. We, went uh, to, we went to preschool together. At what? the audition, Tracy Lords comes up to me. She goes, do you know who I am? And I'm like, <laughs> so first of all, that was a loaded question because <laughs> you're a porn star. Of course, I know who you are. She's And <laughs> she's like, no, we went to preschool together. I'm like, we did? Like, I did not remember that at all. She's like, oh, yeah, we had Mrs. Such and Such. And it was at this school. And I mean, she had all the people right. But boy, I did not remember that. The nicest person. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> the nicest person. And you know, the guy uh, in Drag Strip Girl, he's the guy on the Iron Chef. What? He's, yeah, I forget his name, Mark. I can't think of his name right now. But yeah, the his name is Mark, but he's the guy on the Iron Chef that goes a la cuisine. And yeah, you he's the same guy. Oh my god! And I was I like, I was a little disappointed because I'm like, that's an actor. Like that, they're hiring an actor for that. Right. That was interesting. Yeah. That is interesting. Now I gotta go. Now I gotta go watch. You gotta go watch. Check that it. out again. It's, it's him. What, it's him. Did you uh, did you work at all with uh, Natasha Gregson Wagner? Oh yeah, I was her best friend. I was her best friend mm -hmm. on that show. Um, yeah, she was she was really nice. I mean, she was a she was a big star at, at that time. That was like, you know, everyone definitely on set catered to her. She was the she was the it girl for sure. Did did uh, did Robert Wagner ever show up on the set? I don't think so. I don't no. remember seeing him. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Um, the other one is the best. And this is going back, by the way. But I okay. saw the best little whorehouse in Texas. You yeah. you had something in that. Is that right? Yes, I was a little girl in that show. <laughs> I was not one of the horse. Um, yeah. <laughs> I was a little girl on that show. And uh, that was one of my first jobs. And I had I had gotten cast in that and Gremlins. And when I auditioned, the part was a lot bigger than when, not big, but bigger than yeah. what yeah. ended up in the final edit. I remember going... Um, I don't remember if it was Gremlins or Best Little Horror House in Texas, but going to the cast and crew premiere. And, you know, you don't find out until you're actually in the theater with all those people. And you're like, well, what happened? Where did my scene go? I'm like, <laughs> that's how you found out. Wow. Yeah. Did, yeah. did you meet Dolly or Burt Reynolds? Nope. No, neither one. Neither what? one. I, Gremlins is almost a cult film at this point on many yes. levels. What are your memories of it? And, and what was the experience like? My memory is how bad the smell of the smoke. They have like this movie smoke that they mm -hmm. use to make rooms look very like uh, smoky and smoggy. And mm -hmm. that stuff smells terrible. Like it's all over your clothes. It gives you a massive headache. The, I remember that. Yeah, it was constantly being pumped throughout the scene because it was in a classroom scene. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when I did the audition, I did a really good job. They really liked me. I got cast the very next day. And then I just remembered what my lines were and what ended up in the movie were not the same thing. Ah, uh, interesting. It taught me not to tell people, like don't tell people that you're going to be in an upcoming something until you actually see it. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, exactly. Then they can use it against you, so to speak. Yeah. 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 You said um, you were in Gremlins, like, I was, I swear. Right, right. It's I was there. there. Yeah. Did <laughs> by the way, did they have all the creepy creatures around and stuff? Oh yeah. There were like like puppet animatronic kind of mm -hmm. yeah. Were they creepy? I mean, even just just to go past those? No, not really. I mean, it's like it's kind of like movie making. It's all kind of 
you see what's behind the curtain. Do you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's I very do. different. I would say when I worked on Pennies from Heaven, that was the most fun because it was all very period piece. The costumes, the sets, everything was big and grand. I mean, the sets were just like amazing and huge. And, you know, the costumes were designed by Bob Mackie, the great Bob Mackie. Oh, the greatest. And, yeah. Yeah. Just all of our costumes were just amazing and that was a lot of fun and Bernadette Peters was so sweet and kind and really great oh. great movie to work on I mean you talk about being known for your voice uh there is somebody yeah. that is known for her voice wow Absolutely. that's cool I'm Absolutely. glad to hear that it was it was a good experience Absolutely. by the way did you take any or, or do you have any memorabilia from uh Mr. Belvedere when we finished filming on Belvedere, I got to go through the wardrobe closet, which really wasn't a closet. It was like this big room of all yeah. of our costumes, our characters wore. And I pretty much took like almost all of it. When I lived oh. in Studio City, that house that I bought, there was a guest house in back and I turned it into like a closet. And it was just like rows and rows and rows of all the clothes from Belvedere. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It was so much fun. The wardrobe person on Belvedere was Elvis Presley's wardrobe person. I don't know if Rob told you that. No, I did not know that. Yeah. So his name was Bill Ballou. Bill Ballou drove a baby white Mercedes that Elvis actually gifted him. I guess the story goes that on Christmas day, Priscilla called Bill and said, look out your window, Merry Christmas. And there was a baby Mercedes and a gift from Elvis and Priscilla. Wow. So he drove that car. He was our wardrobe person. And before every season, this was the greatest day of my life. Bill would say, let's go shopping for this season's clothes. And we would go to this store back in the day, back in the eighties, it was called Contempo. And we would go to the mall. We would go to Contempo. And it was just like amazing. Bill would just like be pulling all these clothes and we would go back in the dressing room and try it all on and oh it was amazing i mean how cool is that i mean just you, cool. you like it grab yeah, it yeah let's get it yeah oh my gosh that's cool um so listen the, you know i always i always end my interviews asking people what causes what charities things like that but you're you're slightly different than than most and, and by that i mean uh, something that caught my ear that uh, you've been through is you, and I, I, I hope you don't mind saying this story because I, I found it extremely inspirational, very moving. Is the fact that you dealt with, um, you, you have a, you had a tumor in, in I had your, a brain tumor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you mind uh, just no. telling what what you went through and then where that leads to? Obviously. Sure. Um. So, back in 2019, I was getting really, really bad headaches. I think it was 2019, really bad headaches and um, started slurring my words. And I didn't know what was happening. And one day I went to our local Walmart actually to believe it or not, to pick up a prescription for our old dog. Our old hmm. dog had seizures hmm. and the vet would call in the prescription to the Walmart. So I went to Walmart and this was maybe like two weeks of these bad headaches I was having and slurring my words once in a while. Yeah. And I went up to go give them my name. It was my turn in line. And the lady asked my name and I literally couldn't speak. I couldn't oh. get the words out of my mouth. I could hear her asking me the question, but I couldn't speak. That's scary. It was so scary. Nothing I've ever experienced before. I didn't know what to do. So I turned around and walked away. Mm. Um, it took me about 45 minutes to find my car in the parking lot. Oh when I God. finally found my car, I couldn't remember what I'm supposed to do. Like, do I put the key in? Like I had forgotten and lost everything. Oh, it took me petrifying. so long to figure out how to get home. Um, I told my husband about it. Well, at the time he wasn't my husband. It was my boyfriend, same husband now. Um, mm -hmm. And... What ended up happening was, is I just thought, well, maybe it's because I haven't eaten today. Like I didn't have enough sustenance in my body. So we just kind of whatever. A couple of days later, I'm leaving the office, our Keller Williams office, the real estate office. I'm actually out at the Bakersfield office. That's a long I'm way. driving my car and I'm following one of the people that worked there. Her name was Joette. And we're driving along 
and we're at a red light. And I guess I had a seizure in the car, thankfully at a red light. And I kept, my car kept hitting the back of her car. Oh my God. And she got out of the car. She was with her husband, called 911, and they rushed me to the hospital. And they did a CT scan and they couldn't find anything. They wanted to keep me overnight, but we convinced them to let me go to my doctor the next day. And mm -hmm. when they did the <clears throat> MRI, that's when they found the brain tumor. So within two weeks, I had brain surgery. And thankfully, uh, it wasn't cancer, but it was a grade two meningioma, which means it could come back. Mm. Um, so I have to get MRIs like every year to a year and a half wow. just to check. So, wow. yeah, it was you, really, really, really scary. The but, fact that I had the seizure at a red light, I was very lucky. I was mm -hmm. this close to getting on the freeway. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Wow. That's and I amazing. really have Joette. And I, I say this every, any chance that I get, I really have Joette to thank because she thankfully was driving in front of me. She's a retired nurse. She knew to call 911 and help me. That's time. just fantastic. Um, thanks for sharing the story. Sure. I appreciate it. What, sure. um, what do you, as far as, you know, for you then, what are causes or charities that you kind of feel strongly about if, you know, for yourself. I actually don't do any kind of charity or any kind of work like that. Um, really, my what I'm really passionate about is mm -hmm. helping people in real estate find mm -hmm. their dream of home ownership. That's like I really love helping people. I love talking them through through the process and keeping things as stress free as possible. That's really what my passion is is mm -hmm. really helping people with that. You're very successful at it. You have been very successful. I looked Thank up you. and you were like top, you know, top salesperson this year and all, you know, a lot of, a lot of things. Um, do you think that that comes from an, you know, just an organic place of, like you said, like just wanting to help people? Um, I think I grew up really working hard for things that I wanted to achieve. I have a mm -hmm. very focused type mindset. Mm -hmm. And working hard. I mean, being in real estate, you really have to educate yourself a lot. It is a, a very sue happy business where mm -hmm. you have to be really careful that you're protecting your buyers and sellers. So I really take the time to educate myself, but also making sure that my clients are happy. Um, I don't know. It's just something that I fell into and that I thankfully, knock on wood, I'm really good at. My husband, Frank, and I have our own real estate team. Plus, he runs a real estate office as the team leader. So we're really immersed in real estate. And if someone, you know, is in LA that is watching this, how do they say, yay, I'd, I'd, I'd like her to be my, re my realtor? You know what? You can look me up online. All of my contact information is there. But believe it or not, this year, I helped somebody buy two houses in Spain. I oh. referred them to an agent in Spain. I got uh, paid a referral. I've helped people sell their houses all over the United States. I'm working with a guy right now that lives in Canada that's having trouble selling his house. Um, I mean, I really try to help people find the right people to work with if they're not local here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm about building the relationships. Like I said, John, you're in my web now. <laughs> you're not getting away. <laughs> So that's I'm just how I am. I, I like to build relationships with people. That's the that's the business that I'm in is building relationships with people. Well, any good business, that is the key without it a is. doubt. It yeah. truly is. I agree. Hey, is. thank you so much for Are being on. Are we done? Oh no, I want to talk to you all day. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really appreciate it. This was a lot of fun and my dogs behaved. Good job, guys. I they swear were... the dogs were so quiet. It was funny when they barked, I was like, they did? Yeah, um, they did. No, they were terrific. But yeah, thanks. Thanks so much. Cause it really, uh, really, I appreciate your honesty. I appreciate your openness and, and it, and it, you know, honestly, it's like anything you have a different cast member on from, you know, a show and they have a different perspective than the other, you know, it's, it's yeah. always fun. So, um, thanks for opening up, you know, especially for the Belvedere fans, I'm sure they're going to love it. I'm happy. And I appreciate all the people that appreciated Mr. Belvedere. So thank you so much for having me. You got it. Thanks again. All right. Thanks, bye John. Bye. Hey, don't forget to hit the subscribe button in the corner of the video. And if you like the video, please hit the like button as well. And while you're here, take a look at some of the other great interviews from anybody from Jerry Mathers to Butch Patrick to Judy Norton. 
all fantastic. Have a great one.